At Wind River Resort and Casino, we like to celebrate life's little moments. Oh, and the big ones too. Because around here, when you're completely in the moment, that's when the magic happens. Come in and find your moment at Wind River Resort and Casino. Hello everyone, meteorologist. Oh, I forgot. My microphone is on. I'm here. It's one of those mornings, folks. Uh, I've got a lot going on. Obviously, the weather is about to, to hit us pretty hard here, uh, and I've got a lot going on. I'm trying to, you know, get things on social media. I'm trying to get things going on my 24-hour channel, which, for some reason, the uh, weather update that I recorded this morning isn't going to the weather channel. So I got to figure out what's going on there once I get done here with Coffee with Kruger. But enough of my problems. We don't have to worry about me. Let's worry about you and make sure you know what's going on with the weather. We got some of the regulars checking in this morning here. Can you hear me? First of all, if you can't hear me, let me know. I, again, sometimes I just run into those issues here. But uh, we have got some people checking in. Uh, good morning from Catherine Chappie. Shelly is checking in from uh, Weaverville. Bill Carlton, uh, Stephen Koch. Uh, maybe a snow day at school this week in Weaverville? Mm, probably not was what I would say uh, at this point. Uh, I think Weaverville Hay Fork is going to be very borderline, but we'll get into that here in just a bit. But for those of you who are here for just a quick look at the forecast, let's get you right into it. And we're going to take a look at Kruger's Quick Cast. And this will just kind of get you out the door this morning and let you know what you can expect for today. But before we get into that, a little teaser for you to stick around for the deeper dive forecast later on in the show because we are going to be talking about the flood potential along with mudslides and debris flow potentials as well. We've got low snow levels. To start off, I think some of the colder air is going to get trapped that's in place right now and that's going to allow snow levels to start off fairly low. But then eventually we will start to see those snow levels start to slowly increase as we take you throughout uh, the next couple of days. And gusty winds could lead to power outages. And uh, taking a look at the radar this morning, there are some showers as expected for the north coast. We're also seeing a few snow flurries in some of those higher elevations and in western Siskiyou County. And if you notice, we're actually seeing some lightning strikes over the ocean and even into south southwestern portions of Oregon. So even enough instability in there for a few lightning strikes as well. We're also dealing with cold, cold temperatures this morning in the valley. In fact, there's a freeze warning until 10 o'clock this morning. Boy, I tell you what, temperatures dropping down the low to mid 30s right now. You can see we're at 32 for Corning, 34 in Redding, but most of us are just above freezing, right? So most likely we'll get out of this without getting at least below freezing in many cases, although Corning at 32, 36 for Chico, but of course not staying below freezing in the mountains. 19 for Chester, 21 for Quincy, 17 for Susanville, 19 for you up in El Turris. How about Siskiyou County with 34 in Mount Shasta City, 48 in Eureka, pretty chilly there, and 50 in Crescent City. Taking a look at the visibility out there this morning, uh, looks pretty good. Uh, I'm going to start off by taking a look at the camera here. This is looking out at Elk Country in just north of Trinidad, but I also want to show you, and that one's really not illustrating those winds, but what will illustrate the winds is the camera out in Crescent City. Uh, that camera, the camera in Crescent City is going to show that uh, of course, we've got the overcast skies. We're seeing a few showers out there and you notice the wind. Yeah, the camera is blowing in the wind. And I tell you what, that wind is going to get worse as we take you through the morning and of course this afternoon as well. All right, let's take you back to Elk Country, just north of Trinidad, taking you back to the weather computer. And again, the visibility is, I mean, that's not an issue, but we do still have some chain requirements east of I-5 on Highway 395, south of El Turris east of El Turris, basically between El Turris and Cedarville. You do have on Cedar Pass some chain requirements there as well. Taking a look at what it looks like on Cedar Pass this morning. Yeah, <laughs> it looks cold, right? I mean, you've got the snow on the road there. It looks a little icy, but Highway 299-89 looks good. Hatchet Mountain looks pretty good. This morning, it looked like maybe there were even some snowflakes out there on Hatchet Mountain as well. All right, uh, take a look at some of the other roads out there. You got for down your summit, you got Highway 36 and Highway 89. But take a look at the forecast road conditions here for today. And we can see here that there is possibly going to be some snow there on Scott Mountain here through this morning. Otherwise, it shouldn't be that much of an issue. But look at I-5 later this afternoon and evening, especially around the Mount Shasta area. Okay, you see that uh, pink, that red that's a bit of the snow, rain, snow mix. We could start to see snow 
on I-5 near Mount Shasta around the weed area. You see how heavy that snow gets tonight into early tomorrow morning? Again, kind of in that ice, rain, snow, mix, snow. I think we could be running into some problems on I-5 here later this evening, tonight, and possibly into tomorrow morning as well. All right, let's get you out the door this morning. Of course, we'll get into that a little bit later too. Uh, and there you can see, you know, not a lot of rain out there, just the mostly cloudy skies, although the coasting, some showers this morning as we saw on the radar, a few snow flurries in western Siskiyou County, but it's a cold start to the day. I mean, that's just the bottom line. So you can clearly see that stream of moisture coming in from the west. You see that spin, you see that comma shape there, that's the area of low pressure. Uh, and that's what's helping to kind of drive that all in. And eventually the wet weather will be here, but it's gonna still hold off for a little while. Let's take a look at Futurecast, take you into the noon hour. It's mainly the north coast, western Siskiyou, northern Shasta, Trinity County, and even parts of, say, Modoc County, seeing a few snow flurries. But it's still, the heaviest is off to our west. We take you into the afternoon and the heavier rainfall is still off to the west. However, we are seeing pockets of heavy rainfall for parts of the north coast, Trinity County. Even just around the Redding area, starting to see some of those showers as well. And some light showers to the south of Redding, Red Bluff, Corning, Chico, nothing all that heavy. And then snow in the higher elevations. And then going into tonight, again, light showers for the valley, but the heavier rainfall holds off until probably after midnight, at least for the valley at least, right? Uh, for, until midnight and then early tomorrow morning. And then Wednesday, yeah, I mean, the rain's here in full force. So let's take a look at the, the winds. The winds are already strong along the coast, still strong by noon, 30 to 40 mile an hour there, and central Siskiyou County in uh, Shasta Valley there, those reds indicating 40, 50 miles an hour. Uh, then we go in the afternoon, those winds pick up for the valley as well. But look at Crescent City, still over 50 miles per hour possibility, even this afternoon and evening, you reek about 30 miles per hour. So those winds are really gonna be ramping up. So for today, temperature is around 50 in the valley. We've got those uh, low 40s, uh, basically upper 30s, low 40s for the higher elevations. And for the coast, temperatures mid to upper 50s at the current hour. All right, so let's take a look at that seven day outlook across the region. It's a mess. I mean, look at that seven day forecast. I mean, there's something for every one for every, every day. And in fact, there's a chance for rain for the next seven days. Although I will say this, Monday, Tuesday is when we do expect to see things begin to dry out, especially Tuesday. Uh, still some discrepancy as to whether or not that may linger on into Monday, but you get the idea. The rain is still in the forecast and windy uh, for Wednesday, Thursday, possibly Friday for the coast and the valley as well, and not to mention the inland areas. Snow levels, fairly low. Now, Weaverville, you're at about, what, 2,000 feet, maybe a little bit lower than that. So could you see snow? Not out of the question. Uh, we got some of that colder air that could get trapped this morning and that could allow for some snowflakes in Weaverville. A snow day, probably not. But you can see snow levels as the, as the warmer, moist air moves over Northern California over the next few days, snow levels as a result will climb. And we're gonna be back up to about 5,000 feet Thursday, four to 5,000 feet as we go into Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Now take a look at Mount Shasta, Alturas, and Susanville. And again, you're seeing the snow level starting off around 3,000 feet, maybe locally lower. Uh, and then we are going to be looking at 5,000 feet and higher for Thursday, Friday, back down to 4,000 feet on Saturday. So could we be looking at a lot of snow on the ski park? Yes. Could we be looking at rain eventually on top of that? Possibly. All right. That's a look at your 7-day out outlook. That's a look at Kruger's Quick Cast. And now we're going to take a look at uh, Lake Orville. North Forby, what a beautiful shot. I had to uh, break away this morning, take my son to um, practice for Alpine. Yeah, they're getting ready for snowboarding and skiing uh, and they're doing what they call, I guess they call land practice. Um, and that's when they just kind of work out in the gym, get themselves conditioned to be on the hill. But uh, as I was driving home, I mean, you want to talk about a beautiful sunrise that I saw. I wish I had stopped. I didn't have time though. I didn't get back here and, and get back to work, but a beautiful sunrise. Uh, coming up this morning. Uh, there's a look at Main Street Chico on Highway 32 and traffic seems to be flowing smoothly there. Taking a look at Highway 99 at Neal Road and traffic looks to be okay there as well. Let's take a look at Highway 44 at Sundial Bridge Drive and things look to be a-okay out in Reading. Hey, by the way, for those of you who are watching, know that if you can't watch Coffee with Kruger in the morning or if you can't even stay up to date with my latest forecast, even just kind of uh, 
log into your computer or your phone and watch my latest forecast, you can listen to my latest forecast. 104.3 MK Shafts with Don and Heather in the mornings, Logan Kane in the morning at 106X at 7.50 in the morning, and News Talk KQMS at 8.05. I do an update with Steve and Clark in the morning. So if you're in your car and you're out and about and you say, hey, I missed my Kruger's forecast. Well, you can at these different times listen to my forecast on the radio. How cool is that? I love that. That's cool. Uh, and You know, I tell you what. The, the, all three of those radio stations, they came on board with me uh, at the very beginning. So I'm very grateful for them to have come over with me here with Weather NorCal. Let's check in with you here real quick this morning before we get to the deeper dive forecast. And oh, yeah, it looks like a little bit more active. Boy, when the weather kicks in, more of you are watching. And I certainly appreciate that. You And I'm glad that you come here to Weather NorCal to get the information you need on this approaching storm system. Um, so Let's talk about this real quickly here because this is going to be, you know, we're going to get bombarded with all kinds of different phrases, terms, and expressions. So Curtis is saying, I've heard some other weather sources mention bomb cyclone. Number one, other weather sources. What are you talking about, Curtis? Why are you going at? No, I'm just kidding. Um, has the situation changed or is it just hype? Well, it is a bit hype it, because here's, here's the number one thing. So a bomb cyclone is an area of low pressure that in a matter of 24 hours drops 24 hour millibars in 24 hours. All right, that's a lot of scientific jargon you don't understand. I get that. The lower the pressure of low pressure, all right, so the more it drops in pressure, the stronger the storm system gets and the stronger the winds can get as well. So when you see a, a, a dramatic drop in that uh, the barometric pressure, the winds can get really strong. A couple of things to take note with this bomb cyclone. Number one is it's off the coast. So the winds are going to be strong for the, for the Pacific. It's, uh, and by the way, it's way up to our north too. So the winds are going to be really strong in the Pacific Northwest, but even for many of the inland areas of the Pacific Northwest, not as strong as we typically get with these bomb cyclones because it's pretty far off over the ocean. It is impacting us in the form of winds, and we're going to see those gusty winds, but this is not Armageddon. It's not a bomb cyclone. It is a bit of overhyping uh, because of the positioning of where the area of low pressure is. That said, they are going to see those gusty winds, especially in the, in the Pacific Northwest, but we are too. But the bomb cyclone has nothing to do with our, what's the other term we're going to hear all the next several days? Atmospheric river. Not the end of the world. However, this atmospheric river is going to bring us a lot of rainfall. Pineapple Express, call it what you will. Good old fashioned rainfall, if that's what you want to call it. We'll do that. But I'm, you're going to hear, still hear me use those terms when I'm uh, referencing these storms because those terms help explain what's going on. We got to go into that. Uh, Kimberly saying, got to tune in. Um, let's see here. So yeah, that's just kind of addressing Curtis, uh, Curtis's question about bomb cyclone. Uh, getting laundry done before uh, a, a chance for a power outages. Yeah, I mean, because the winds are going to be very strong out there. Um, sources on Facebook, yeah, not reliable anyways. Although I'm on Facebook. No, just kidding. Um, good morning from Shasta Lake from Wanda. Got my snow boots out. Yes, it is definitely going to be snowing out there for some of those higher elevations. Um, all right, good stuff. We'll tell you what, what do you say we get to the deeper dive forecast and get you ready. Uh, and we're not only going to talk about today, but we're going to talk about the next several days. And yes, you're going to hear me say atmospheric river. You will. But again, it's not overhyping. Uh, I'm going to take you back to something here real fun. For those of you that are new, discovering weather NorCal for the first time, I noticed a, a massive increase in people watching on YouTube. I thought that was great. Thank you all so much for watching. You see that? If you're just discovering weather NorCal with my... <laughs> little coffee stain mug. Um, it says, no hype, just weather. No hype, just weather. You know, one of the things that always frustrated me when I was back in TV is all the hype. I remember when the consultants came in 15, 20 years ago, you got it. You got to talk about the storm, Ian. You got to, I mean, just dramatics drove me nuts. I just wanted to give you the forecast. No drama, man. No drama. No drama. All right. I'm off my soapbox. All right, let's get you to it. And by the way, Coffee with Kruger is made possible by Wind River Resort and Casino. At Wind River Resort and Casino, enjoy friendly service, a wide variety of specials and promotions, plus all of your favorite slots and table games. Thank you to Wind River for your support. And let's get you to the forecast. We're going to start off with taking a look at the radar 
not a lot going on. I mean, we've got a few showers off the coast. Some, some did move through this morning, even some snow flurries in western Siskiyou County. Look at that, even some lightning strikes down into southwestern Oregon, some, some off the coast here. Uh, but I don't anticipate to see any lightning strikes for the coast, although yeah, maybe in the next few hours. Temperatures upper 40s to low 50s for the coast. Teens, 20s off to the east, to the north out in Siskiyou County in the low to mid 30s. And look at those cold temperatures this morning out in uh, the valley at 32 degrees for Corning, 34 degrees right now in Redding. All right, so here's your weather headlines. Periods of heavy and steady rain this week. Potential for flooding, mudslides, debris flows. Heavy snow at lower levels, travel delays, chain requirements, gusty winds, potential for power outages. There is a lot to unpack over the next couple of days because we've got a little bit of everything out there. Winds, rain, and snow. All right, there it is. Look at the setup here. You got a classic comma shape here. You got the swirling area of low pressure. What's gonna happen is this is all just gonna dive southward. So this flat line, what we call zonal flow pattern of all this moisture heading right into Northern California, what's gonna happen is this. This is all going to dive down to the south and we're gonna see this line turn into something like this and then it will come right into Northern California, okay? And I wanna kinda of show you where all the source is coming from. Look at all this. We got the tropics right here. We're kinda of tapping into that and then our flow is tapping into all of that moisture that's been coming on in. So we've got a steady stream of moisture heading our way. So let's take a look at Futurecast. We're gonna really walk you through all of this here. All right, so here's six o'clock this morning. I've got snow levels starting off 2,500, 3,500 feet. Keep in mind, Hay Fork, we revealed today, you may see some snowflakes. Light accumulation, it's gonna be hard, hard pressed. But I mean, here you are. I mean, uh, there's, I mean, it's, it's so borderline, right? But Mount Shasta, I think you're gonna see some snow out of this. Okay, 2,500, 3,500 feet. Look where most of the rain is, off to the west. Then by later this afternoon, we're starting to see the valley get in. So late afternoon, the valley starts seeing rain, but the main flow of moisture is still right here, although we're beginning to see some of the heavier rainfall along parts of the north coast. All right, let's take you to tonight and tomorrow morning. There it is. This is what we're talking about, that atmospheric river. There's the atmospheric river. That's it, right? Pineapple Express. All that moisture, it's aimed right at Northern California. Now, here's the thing about atmospheric rivers. They are, 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 are uh, thin columns of moisture aimed at a particular location, which in this point case is Northern California, right? You get on the outer edge of that, on the north and the outer edge of that to the south, you're not seeing as much rainfall, not the same impacts. So as we go into Wednesday morning, not as much rain for the coast, but the heavier rainfall to the east, southeast and the snow. So if you're traveling on I-5 tonight or tomorrow morning, be prepared for the fact that there are gonna be most likely be chain requirements, maybe even closures uh, on I-5, but there are going, there's gonna be some snow most likely on I-5 sometime tonight and into tomorrow. Be prepared for that. Be prepared for heavy rainfall for the valley, six o'clock tomorrow morning. As we're watching uh, Coffee with Kruger, we'll be looking at that rain coming on in. Here's Wednesday at noon, and there you have it. We're still seeing that aimed right at Northern California. Outer fringes of that is the coast. That's why you're not gonna see as much rain there. But it will begin to fill in more, as you see here, by Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday evening. Now the coast getting more involved. So what's gonna start to happen? Remember I was talking about that area of low pressure diving to the south? Well, that will cause this to kind of tilt more to the north and west as it does that. So then the coast gets more involved in that. But what we're also going to notice is through the day tomorrow, snow levels will start to rise. Now, initially I mentioned that the snow level is gonna be fairly low. You've got the colder air that's gonna get trapped at the lower levels. Eventually, as this moisture, which is warm, moist air, it's gonna to start to mix out a lot of that colder air at the lower levels, and we start to see snow levels look rise as a, as a result. Still fairly low though, about 3,500 feet, maybe locally lower. So Mount Shasta City, you're still looking at most likely some of that snow, even Wednesday at 7 p.m. But we're still seeing that steady rainfall for the valley. All right, you see how, what happens? I mean, it just, yeah, it kind of breaks apart a little bit here, but then it kind of fills back in. 6 a.m. Thursday, look at the blues and the pinks on the map. We're not seeing nearly as much, right? And the reason being again, that warm, moist air is mixing out that colder air, and now we're seeing rain on top of probably some of the fresh snow that we've seen, including, as much as I hate to say it, maybe even the ski park. 
All right, so there's 5 p.m. Thursday. I mean, now it's all pretty much just rain with the exception of there's the mountain of Mount Shasta, there's Lasted Peak, right? That's where you're gonna see the snow, but otherwise you're looking at rain in many of the higher elevations and of course for the valley. That's through Thursday. Keep in mind, we're not going into Friday just yet. Flash flood risk for today. There it is, Mar marginal to slight, basically for the North Coast today. We advance into tomorrow. Now the North Coast is in that moderate range. The valley is in the slight to marginal range. Then we take you into Thursday. You're mainly in that slight range. And not only for the North Coast are you in the moderate, but you're in the high risk for a flash flood risk. And then of course that extends eastward. So take a look at that. Now take a look at this. This is coming in from the National Weather Service and it's a flood watch for the valley surrounding foothills, Southern Trinity County and Del Norton Humboldt counties. This is through Saturday. So basically now through Saturday, as we see that rain kind of move on through because even though the atmospheric river will be gone and no longer aimed at us by Friday into Saturday, we're still seeing showers over the weekend. Take a look at this. I mean, this is just take a look at it. Take it in. Take a look at the numbers, take it in. All right, this is a lot of rain we're talking about here. This is why the map I showed you before to kind of set you up for the fact that we do have that flood watch. We're gonna be hearing about flooding. There's, there's gonna be some flooding out there. We're gonna see creeks, streams, rising rivers. The Sacramento River will probably rise. Uh, we are going to poss see the potential for mudslides and debris flows. I mean, especially with the park fire, right? but many of the recent burn scar areas, we can see mudslides and debris flows. Even outside of the burn scar areas, you can see mudslides and debris flows. So be prepared for that as well. Not just concerned about mountain travel with the snow, but the mudslides and debris flows are gonna be a possibility as well. Winter storm warning, basically through Wednesday for the areas in pink, winter weather advisory for the areas in purple. Bottom line, we're just gonna see snow out there. It's gonna be heavy snow at times, especially tonight and into tomorrow. It's gonna to create travel delays, all right. This also gets a little dramatic when we're looking at some of these snow totals, especially for Mount Shasta City. I'm not sold on the amount of snow that they're going to see here. Look at this. All right, so 30 to 40 inches of snow in Mount Shasta City through 5 p.m. Wednesday. This is, we'll see. We'll see about that. But, uh, you know, the thing is, it's probably going to be a wet snow and the heaviest snow is probably going to fall tonight, tomorrow morning. But then as we go through the day tomorrow, those snow levels will start to rise. So for us to see two, three feet of snow in Mount Shasta City, I think is, uh, I, I, I'm not buying it just yet. But I mean, look at Bernie. That might be overdoing it as well. I mean, some of these lower mountain communities, yes, I think you're going to see snow for the first time that you, and you haven't seen it yet. But Chester, I mean, Chester's at 4,500 feet. So for you to see snow, accumulating snow, that's not out of the question. But then we're kind of getting some shadowing areas here where we're just not seeing as much rain and snow up there. All right, so that was fun. Here's another fun thing. Check this out. Yeah. Now, of course, I dropped my son off this morning for alpine practice, not on the mountain. Of course, he can't do it yet, but they're doing, uh, they're just kind of conditioning themselves. But that's what they're all have in their heads, right? When can we go up there and start snowboarding and skiing? When can we get up there? My son keeps asking, oh, with all the snow that we're getting, are they going to open up for Thanksgiving Day? Well, that's not a choice I make. That's a choice the ski park makes. But here's, here's, a, here's the thing that frustrates me a little bit here. We're going to be looking at a lot of snow at the ski park. That's The base is... I think it's 5,000 feet. And of course, up at the higher elevations. Yeah, the base is about 5,000 feet. The problem is, as I mentioned, that the snow levels will be rising as we go into Wednesday afternoon, especially Thursday, Friday. We're going to see all the snow here, several feet of snow, as a matter of fact. But then you get rain, most likely, by Thursday, Friday, on top of that snow. And we may see, not all of it, but we, we're going to see some of that snow melt. That's a bummer, but at least, I mean, if we can get two, three feet of snow up there, then hopefully two days of rain won't really spoil things. 
I'm going to take you back to that uh, map here. Uh, there you can see, of course, uh, looking at the chain requirements that we still have out there. Nothing major right now. And as we take a look at the cameras here, uh, this is what it looks like on Cedar Pass. Yeah, still a mess up there, but obviously those other elevations were uh, not looking at as many problems. So the road conditions this morning, all right, you can see here, by noon, Scott Mountain, they've been seeing mountain, uh, up on Scott Mountain, they've been seeing snow up on that pass there the last few days. So we're gonna definitely see that with this system coming through and it's gonna get heavy. The darker blue indicating heavy snow. They'll probably close off Scott Mountain with the amount of snow that they're gonna see up there. Cedar Pass maybe seeing some snow off in some of those mountain passes in the Eastern Mountains. I-5, there it is. All right, so we're basically in this category right here. That's all wintry precipitation. That is why I'm concerned about travel on I-5 tonight, tomorrow morning. There may be some backups, there may be some delays, there may even be a closure on I-5. So be prepared for that. Be mentally prepared for the fact that you may not be able to get up on I-5 tomorrow morning. We'll see, we'll see. We'll see what happens with the storm as it pushes on through. All right, we're in a stick shift now, we're switching gears. <laughs> All right, so now we're going from, well, we were talking about rain and flooding, we we're talking about snow and chain requirements and closures on I-5. Now we gotta talk about the winds because the winds are also gonna be something we gotta talk about. Now, just this morning, the National Weather Service finally decided to issue a wind advisory for tonight through Wednesday, gusts 35 to 45 miles per hour. Okay, there you can see the high wind warning for central Siskiyou County. Also, Modoc County, we also have a high wind warning uh, through tomorrow morning, uh, basically this evening through tomorrow morning for the North Coast. I mean, windy conditions, 50, 60, some of those higher mountain peaks, 70 miles an hour. Power outages are certainly a possibility with winds this strong. Look at the winds already. I mean, we're already 30, 40 miles an hour along the coast, but elsewhere, you're saying, what storm are you talking about, Mike? What storm? I mean, I look out the window now, I can do that right here. It's like, okay, I see a few clouds. What are you talking about storm out there? There's one, it's coming, right? Now, again, the forecast winds, we're gonna take you into the noon hour, still very strong, 30, 40 mile hour plus winds. Winds beginning to pick up by the noon hour. Look at central Siskiyou County, Shasta Valley. Yeah, those winds are picking up. Let's take it to 6 p.m. Tuesday. 30, 40, 50 mile an hour winds along the coast. Look at that, you're getting off the scale here. 50, 60 miles an hour. That's central Siskiyou County. <laughs> High profile vehicles, not fun. They're probably gonna, you know, if, if the winds do get that strong, they, they're probably gonna close it off for big rigs because that's just too dangerous. Uh, those south winds uh, pr getting pretty gusty along the, for the valley. Now we go into Wednesday and Thursday, still gusty winds. It's gonna be off and on. Sometimes, at uh, some points in some places stronger than others. But you can see, especially in those mountain ridges, mountain valleys, and along the coast, we're seeing those really strong winds here through Thursday, possibly even into Friday. All right, so here it is. There is the Pineapple Express. All right, for those of you that are old school, like that term better, we'll go ahead and use that one. There's the good old fashioned rain, Northern California, or if you wanna get scientific, if you're a modern day person and you want some scientific phrases, Let's talk about it. Atmospheric river. That's essentially what's happening here. Pineapple Express and Atmospheric River are basically the same thing, by the way. So, and for those of you who are really kind of savvy, remember when they used to even call it coconut connection? All right, all right, so all right, enough of that. But here you have it. All that moisture coming in. Now look what's happening. We, you, know, you hear this too. It's like taking a hose and pointing it right at Northern California. So here's today. It's gonna be shifting southward. There's Wednesday. There it is, there's all that moisture, boom, coming right in. And see the two streams? And you'll see that here when we take a look at the available moisture, but uh, that's aimed right at Northern California. That's Wednesday. Look at Thursday. Doesn't move, does it? That's Thursday. Steady rainfall, it's all still aimed right at Northern California. But look at Friday, look what's happening. It shifts to the south. So as we go into Friday, we're still seeing that rain, but now it's scattered showers as we go into Saturday, Sunday, no longer associated with the Pineapple Express or Coconut Connection or Atmospheric River. It's just scattered showers pa passing on through Saturday, Sunday. And it looks like sometime early next week, 
we'll finally start to dry things out around here. Now, this is something I've got my eyes on. Some models want to bring it in by the middle to latter part of next week. For now, it looks like this is going to st uh, stay put. But we'll see. We'll see. All right. Take in some of these numbers too, because this can take you all the way through Monday. Long range forecast models. Uh, all right. So what? Upwards of eight, nine, close to 10 inches of rain for uh, parts of the valley. And of course, what you'll notice here, not as much or just as much for the coast. Typically, the coast sees more. Here's a different forecast model. Um, but you can see still north end of the valley still indicating close to 10 inches for Redding. But I think here's what I'm going to say for the valley. I think on average, we're going to be at about six to seven inches, give or take. Some areas seeing less than that, especially down to the south here. Some areas seeing more than that, maybe upwards of eight, nine, ten inches. But this is the next seven days that we're looking at here. Not as much rain to the north and east, but still some decent rainfall off to the west. This is, by the way, this whole area is where we, is where we have that flood watch because this is where we're going to see the most amount of rainfall. All right, so this is looking at um, the amount of precipit precipitable water is what it's known as, okay? This is basically just showing you where the moisture content is in the atmosphere. So, from terminology standpoint, this is known in the scientific community, and you should know it too, it's known as an atmospheric river, Pineapple Express, whatever you want to call it. It's basically just a, a thin column of moisture aimed right at Northern California. Remember those two little areas? We got this one right here and another one kind of coming in. So they're kind of converging and coming into Northern California. So that's what it's looking like on Wednesday. As we progress through time, as we go into Friday, we start, so there's Thursday. So remember I was talking about this, and this is something I forgot to mention. I mentioned a little bit earlier. The area of low pressure, as it dives to the south, it causes this. Remember that flat line I was talking about on the, uh, that, that jet stream, it was, it was the, uh, the flat line and that was the moisture coming into Northern California. But then later this week that we're seeing here, that low dies to the south and it causes that flat line to do this. And it causes that flat line, even though it's shifting southward because it's over here, that causes it to tilt back into Northern California. All right, that may have gotten a little confusing, but you get the idea, it's still pointed to us on Thursday. Let's take you into Friday and into Saturday, it's now shifting to our south. We're no longer under the influence of an atmospheric river by Friday evening and Saturday. As I mentioned, it's just gonna be uh, scattered showers as we go into the weekend. So, atmospheric river, again, I'm mentioning it again, not to over-dramatize, but there are different categories of atmospheric rivers on the impact, AR1, atmospheric river one, all the way to five. So where does that put us? Where are we on that scale? Well, it's good to see we're not way up here, right? We are in the AR1 to AR2 category. Now, this is looking along the coast, by the way, for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And you can see that we're kind of in that blue to even that green range. Um, boy, I had some issues with some of my editing here, uh, but there's a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. All right, anyway, so uh, here you can see this is looking at the foothills east of the valley. All right, so Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you can see mainly within that blue, which is AR1 category. So as you head along the coast into the valley, you're kind of in that green range borderline, even getting into the strong range. But as you head east of the valley, the impacts of the atmospheric river aren't going to be quite as high. All right, so let's take a look at those wave heights. And you can see, yeah, they are getting high for today. This is, the, you know, this week is just not a good week to be out on a small boat, bottom line. Here's a look at your marine forecast for today. Southeast winds at uh, 25 to 30 knots. There's your waves. There's your high and low tide. No big surprises here. There's a small craft advisory. Still need to mention that there is that freeze warning until 10 o'clock tonight, 30 to 35 for that overnight low. Whew. All right, did you get all that? Because now we're just gonna get to the overall forecast. All right, so Trinity County, look at the next seven days. Monday, we'll see what happens. Um, I've got Tuesday of next week dry. It may even be dry on Monday, we'll see. But basically for the next six to seven days, rain each and every single day. Snow levels starting off low, 
They'll start to slowly rise on Wednesday. They'll rise even more Thursday, Friday, about four to 5,000 feet and higher. And then they lower a little bit by Sunday and Monday. Could we see Buckhorn Summit with some snow? Later tonight, later tomorrow morning, sure. Be prepared for that, all right? Take it to the south, Trinity County, 41 for High and Pond, 41 for Forest Glen. Uh, there you can see uh, Hay Fork, about 41 degrees for that daytime high. Southern Humboldt County for your North Coast neighborhood forecast. Temperatures up 40s, low 50s. By the way, if you're just watching for the first time, these neighborhoods are on the website or on the Free Weather NorCal app. So if you live or you're going to any of these neighborhoods, I've broken it down into six different neighborhoods. And you can get a specialized forecast for each of those neighborhoods. I also update a video forecast Monday through Friday, once a day with these neighborhoods. And you get something like this. 52 degrees out towards Blue Lake, 57 degrees in Trinidad, take you up north, 46 out towards Gas Key, 54 for Smith River, Orleans about 47 degrees, and your Siskiyou County neighborhood forecast, 48 for Syed Valley, 48 degrees for Horse Creek, and looks like uh, Wairika about 44 degrees. Scott Valley, temperature of 42, 42 for Fort Jones, 40 out in Callahan. And off to the central and eastern Siskiyou County. It is going to be a cold one out there. And of course, that explains why we're going to see snow at some of these lower elevations. 37 out in Newell today, 39 for Alturas, and likely about 41 degrees. Let's take it to the south. 42 degrees for Montgomery Creek, 47 for Paynes Creek, and 40 out in Bieber. And for Lake Almanor, Lassen Park. There you can see temperatures uh, around the perimeter of the lake, around 40. Uh, and of course, for the park, cold. 30s there. And take it to the south. You can see paradise. Showers later in the day. Windy and rainy for Wednesday, Thursday there. Uh, temperatures today around 38 for Mineral. 42 degrees for Susanville. How about your Valley Neighborhood Forecast brought to you by Walgamuth Painting. Your temperatures low to maybe some mid 50s for some of the warmer spots out there for today. 45 degrees over Whiskey Town. 44 in Lakehead. 50 in Redding. And looks like Cottonwood a high today of about 51 degrees. All right, let's wrap things up here and get you to your seven day forecast for Reading. And uh, we've got the upper 40s by Wednesday, a bit on the windy side. Uh, we've got those mid 50s for Thursday and Friday. And then we're going to be looking at those temperatures uh, probably in the low 50s by Sunday. But again, you kind of look at that seven day forecast, you're like, man, we're going to see rain like every day. And that certainly is going to be the case. But it is what it is, right? We bring in that rain. Um, all right, let's check in with you, see what everybody's kind of talking about while I was up there at the weather wall. I can't really monitor what's going on at the weather wall when, you know, I'm given the forecast, but I can now see what everyone's talking about here and what everyone's doing here. Um, good morning from Klamath. Let's get you some of you on the screen here this morning and uh, see how everybody's doing this morning. Uh, we got, uh, good morning from Klamath. All right, well, good morning to you. Um, we are listening closely here in Bieber. We are shipping cattle to the valley pastures and need to know road conditions and upcoming weather. Thanks, Mike. Well, I pre I'm glad you, I'm glad you're coming here for that information because you're going to, you're going to get uh, the, the information you need. Uh, so you're from Bieber. <laughs> um, I think today would be your best bet. Get it done. The earlier, the sooner, the better, man. I tell you what, because by the time you get into tonight, it's going to get worse. That's what I would say. But, you know, I, I don't have to transport cattle, so I don't know how last minute you, you know, you can get with some of that. Um, all right. So, okay. See, this is, this is, oh, I'm so glad you come here because we got to go off of this. We got to go off of the no hype. Thank you, Kimberly. See, you look at the hype and it gets people all worried. And then, see, the thing is, as much as I hate to say it, it's what draws attention. Um, and, and that's where the media sources have kind of come in over the years. I mean, the last 20, 15 years or so, picking up on that, that people pay attention when there's drama and there's hype. But that's not a good thing. That doesn't mean it's a good thing. People still pay attention. They're going to want it. Hey, you're talking about six inches of rain, seven inches of rain. That's enough. That to me is enough for someone to go, oh, I need to pay attention, right? I don't need to use fancy words like bomb cyclone and this is going to be Armageddon. 
uh, all those things, right? We don't need to do that because when you start hyping it like that, then people start getting worried. And that's what I hate to hear. So Kimberly, I'm sorry you had to, to get worried about this, but that being said, we need to pay attention to this storm because we need to know what to expect. And, and we are gonna expect to see some flooding in some areas. It is gonna create some problems, some, some bottlenecking on the roads. It's gonna do a lot here. Um, the calm before the storm in Arcata this morning. I'm surprised it's not that windy there right now. Is it pretty windy? I would think it is. We're seeing some gusts. Uh, I've seen uh, 20, 30 miles an hour up there, especially out towards Crescent City, for example. Of course, that's a bit of a distance, distance away. Uh, I will be checking your interactive radar a lot. Well, that's good. Good idea. We got Tom Frazier saying, good morning, Mike. Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, and of course, great deal to the forecast. That's what I'm here for. Um, then we've got uh, Bradshaw saying, the best weather forecast comes from Mike Kruger, Weather North. Well, I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Uh, and of course, kind of what I was mentioning earlier, Helen is saying they want you glued to their programs. Absolutely. You got to do whatever you can for the ratings, right? Um, you know, I, I do what I can, but I think I, I try to do it in the most ethical way. So you're not like being bombarded with atmospheric river and all that kind of stuff. I use the term and I'll use it more and more. I'll, I'll continue to use it, but I try to put more context into it. That's kind of how that works. Um, thank you for doing this. I listen to you when I'm getting ready for work. Very good. Very good. Thank you, Patrick. You know, that's kind of a cool thing, kind of an example of what Patrick does there. So Patrick, if you have a smart TV, Roku, Amazon Fire Stick, for example, or even just a smart TV in general that has YouTube on it, you can actually put my 24 hour streaming channel on in the background. And that will have all the latest forecasts. It'll have my latest video forecast, which right now it doesn't. I've got to figure out what's going on with that. And as soon as I'm off here, I'm going to fix that, do what I can. Um, but uh, there you go. So you can have it, you know, because that's how people used to do it back in the day and probably still do, is they would have the, the news on in the morning in the background while the kids are getting ready for school and they're getting ready for work and they wouldn't listen to the news and then they would wait. And then when they'd hear the weather's on, they would stop what they're doing and watch the weather. But you can have the weather on all the time and have it on in the background at least. Uh, Brad Shaw saying we catch coffee with Kruger um, every morning at our daycare. Ah. Oh. Let us know if the kiddos can play outside. Well, very cool. It's at the daycare. Daycares are fun. Um, oh, really? I didn't know I could do that. I will have to see how that works. Okay, Patrick. Fire, if you have Fire Stick or Roku, just search in, that, in the app store there. Search for Weather NorCal. Now, if you don't have Roku, Amazon Fire Stick, but you have the smart TV, then go to the YouTube. Uh, go, go to the YouTube. Go to YouTube. Search for Weather NorCal, and then you can subscribe to the channel from your, from your TV, and you can watch not only the 24-hour streaming channel, but all of the videos that I've uploaded on there as well. So you can watch the latest forecast. You can just go ahead and skip right to the latest forecast. All of that. So yeah, check it out. It's, in fact, when I was looking at the analytics for YouTube, it said that six, I think it was... Um, like 70 some odd percent of people who watch my YouTube videos are actually watching it from a TV and not from their computers or their phones. Kind of interesting. Apple TV, uh, no, sorry. The only workaround for Apple TV right now is just the YouTube app on Apple TV. Um, but honestly, I want a more robust Roku and Fire Stick app anyways. Um, and I'm in the process of researching that and checking it out. Um, because I want you to be able to watch my weather forecast on demand. And uh, getting an app is very expensive. So I've just got to figure out how to make that happen. But once I do, yes, it will eventually be on Apple TV. But I'm an Apple TV person myself. Um, so the workaround for that is just go to the YouTube um, app on your Apple TV. And then, of course, you can watch it from the YouTube channel. So there you go. Yeah, bummed ass. Uh, good question. Sorry about that. Um, there you go. What a morning, huh? What a morning. Well, I think that's going to do it for us. I'm glad that we could kind of chat this morning and check in with everybody here um, and see how everybody's doing. What do you say we get ready for uh, wrapping up the show? 
We're going to take a look at some of the cameras out there this morning. I want to thank you all for checking in and be sure to keep checking in uh, throughout the afternoon on my latest video forecast. And of course, I'll be back here again tomorrow morning on Coffee the Kruger. In the meantime, have yourselves a great, what is today? Today's Tuesday? Yeah. Have a great Tuesday. Make it a great Tuesday. And we'll see you tomorrow.